Hello guys, today we're going to talk about Federalist Papers. So in this episode, I am going to talk about Chapter 2, which is Jay. <clears throat> he also is worried about the nation uh, not staying together and divided falling. He put forward basically the idea that since we've already done this, it's okay to make it bigger. You know, we've already relied on people who we didn't really know, but now we're going to put people in that we do know. They have been tested and tried, and so it wouldn't be as bad as the people who we didn't know making these decisions for us. So his, so again, the idea of if America does not stay um, together, then we will fall from the inside. I've seen um, a quote like that similar coming from Abraham Lincoln. So this was a, this has always been something that the nation has been worried about. Uh, are we going to fall together? Um, or are we going to divide and be divided from the inside and fall that way? <clears throat> It's always believed by the people who created the country that if we stayed together, then we will remain free. Okay, And that is something that I agree with. That is a sentiment I should say I agree with where you are stronger if you come together and you fight injustice that way or you fight for your freedom that way. The problem comes in when you have a group of people and there's someone in that group of people who doesn't want the freedom that you want. They want what the guys on the outside want, which is, you know, for me, I'm looking at this as communism, socialism, progressivism, leftism, whatever word you want to use that, that says in any way, shape, or form that the government somehow knows better than I do how I should live my life. Neither one of these men are saying that the government knows better how you should live your life. What they're saying is that it would be better if we all stayed together so that we could defend ourselves from outside forces and maintain our freedoms. I'm going to read you something uh, from Jay that I like the most as soon as I can find it because it's again the idea of the individual coming together to form a larger, greater, stronger whole. Okay, this is not the idea of collectivism where we all have to be the same, but that we are all unique individuals coming together to fight for the one thing, and that's freedom and ability to live your life as you see fit, basically. <clears throat> Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. So here he's talking about the Congress that was composed uh, earlier on before we had an official Congress. They had a different one. And it says that they were individually interested in the public liberty and prosperity, and therefore that it was not less their inclination than their duty to recommend only such measures as, after the most mature deliberation, they really thought prudent and advisable. All right, and this is the idea of that when they had the government, they had to think of what's good for the individual and not good so much for the whole. Is as you see here, it's just what would be good. Now, because people nowadays come from different ideas of what freedom is and they have different ideas of what is good and how far that should go that's mainly our largest talking point america was formed on the idea that the the church and the government are separate in the sense that the church cannot tell what the government to do and the government can't tell what the church to do and that's different that hasn't been the truth in many or any other government uh, situations you can practice your religion as you see fit. One of the reasons why, you know, the pilgrims and all those people came here is because no one of their known world had a claim to it, and they could come here and escape the Catholic Church from telling them how they have to practice their religion. Okay? They are running to freedom and danger. 
freedom and danger go hand in hand. And so this is the slippery slope kind of thing for me where these gentlemen are concerned that we won't stay together and so therefore because we won't stay together we will then die means that we will lose everything. When the early settlers came over, I'm talking like the first ones, right? From Britain, because that's mostly what we're who we're dealing with here. They did not count or consider the danger to be something at all. They mainly thought I need to be free to commune with my creator, my God. And so I'm going to take me and my fellows who believe the same are going to take a ship and we're going to leave. All right. These people were being jailed for using a certain kind of Bible and all this other stuff. Okay. So <clears throat> I understand the fear that Jay has. I just don't agree that that is how it would play out. I think just like those early colonies who each had different rules, they were similar, but they were also different that we could have stayed together as one to fight outside tyranny very well. I think the desire to keep us all under one government is what creates such, how do I say it, such divisiveness or panic. If you knew there was a place that you could live more liberally if that's what you wanted to do and not be affected by the people who want to, wanted to live more conservatively and vice versa, you probably would be more inclined to defend the nation and less inclined to listen to the outside world that says, oh no, you're terrible. Because anyone who doesn't have freedom desires freedom. And if they can't get it, then they desire to take it so that you could be a slave also. All right. <clears throat> so in, in this, he's very much about the individual. He says in his, his closing argument, basically, that they who promote the idea of substituting a number of distinct confederacies in the room of the plan of the convention seem clearly to foresee that the rejection of it would put the continuance of the union in the utmost jeopardy. So basically, if you're going to have confederacies instead of one federal government, you're putting us all in jeopardy. That certainly would be the case, and I sincerely wish that it may be as clearly foreseen by every good citizen that whenever the dissolution of the Union arrives, America will have reason to exclaim, in the words of the poet, farewell, a long farewell to all my greatness. So for Jay, he has, he has extreme concerns that what would happen is they would remove themselves from being one as they fought for their freedom, have separate governments, and then that would fall, would fell them. You know, of course, my answer to that would be, well, no, we could create a Congress from each separate confederacy to fight for our freedom outside. And they've already argued that that wouldn't work, even though technically that is how it already has worked. Um, the people who were for a confederacy versus a national federal government kind of worked that in where the states get to maintain their autonomy to a point. And all the states, as we have now, send to the national federal government whoever wants to uh, join up. And they protect us from outside forces. So I don't see why it would not have worked the same way, even if the confederacies were larger. So I disagree, obviously, with his premise. And I disagree with his conclusion. Uh, the only thing I really agree with is, yeah, we all, as confederacies, need to stick together as Americans. Okay, And this is, I think, one of the things that's missing right now, is that as Americans, we think the best way, some of us think the best way to keep America great is to make it so that all Americans lose their ability to live their life. And what I mean by that is if I'm paying so much taxes that I cannot save or I cannot 
protect myself in some other way uh, through buying of insurances, let's say, if you want to do that. Because it's so expensive, then what you've done is divided us because now I have to survive. Excuse me, and individuals will survive over the collective because each individual desires to do so. Okay. And it's very difficult for me to understand where someone's coming from, where their idea is, I have to take from you to live. I would rather be given the choice to gladly give. And this, to me, is an underlying thing in Jay's arguments that is uh, sort of veiled, sort of vaguely there, where he is con so concerned that we'll lose all of this, that all these people die, will end up dying for nothing, that he is willing to put us all under one rule because we've done it before. Well, yeah, we have done it before in an emergency sort of situation. And then we also have run away from what you're actually suggesting we do. So I would have been on the side of the Confederacy where people had more freedom, more choice. If you wanted to go one place, you could go there. If you wanted to go another place, you could go there. I understand some people would say, well, then we would have different money and all this other stuff. I was like, uh, worldwide, we have different money and we have exchange rates. I mean, I don't think it would have been that, that hard. So that's it for this one today, guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any ideas, go ahead and drop them down there in the comment section. Anything you'd like to debate, etc. And if you wouldn't mind giving me a like, subscribe, or go ahead and share this with your friends, I would really appreciate it. Okay, I hope you have a great day. Bye.